I share my personal story with you as a tribute to all those that came before me and an obligation to all those that will follow. You are a survivor from the moment you're diagnosed. I'll never forget being wheeled away from my husband and mother at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City through these large gray double doors bearing a diamond-shaped yellow sign reading, no visitors beyond this point. Dressed in my thin cotton gown on a cold metal gurney, I was wheeled into my parking spot alongside other patients coming in and out of surgery. Doctors and nurses were dashing around as I lay there at 8 a.m. for my 9 a.m. surgery slot. At noon, I called over a nurse. Excuse me, I'm so sorry to bother you, but my surgery is supposed to be 12 hours long, and at this point, they'll be operating on me at midnight. Could we reschedule for tomorrow? She said, oh, honey, don't you worry about it. They do this all the time. Now, do you want a magazine? And that's when I felt this frustration deep inside begin to erupt. Why didn't my dentists know I was staring at them on my lateral tongue? Why didn't my oral surgeons question the first biopsy, perform a second? I took my frustration out on this nurse. Do you know that I may never speak articulately again? I may never swallow normally. Tomorrow, I may not recognize my own face. And you're asking me if I want a magazine? She backed up apologized, and walked away. I had nowhere to direct my frustration but upwards. How could you do this to me? I stopped myself remembering wise words of a friend who said, when you are angry, you're weak. I wanted to be strong. I looked right back up and said, thank you for doing this to me and not to my children. I lashed out again, but why stage four? I stopped myself. Thank you for doctors that can give me hope. But why my tongue of every part of this body? I have been a professional performance artist reaching people through powerful storytelling, interactive folklore, so why my tongue? I stop myself once again. Thank you for taking a third of my tongue and not a third of my brain. When I started to think this way, I felt this strength begin to well up in me, and I looked my cancer in the eye and I said, you are not gonna squat your ugly face in this vessel because I am going to fight. It's human nature to lament your losses and a true human skill to recognize your gifts every day. Throughout my ordeal with oral cancer, I never lost the ability to make a choice. When we choose to face whatever our life challenge is with strength, we turn adversity into opportunity. An opportunity to leave a legacy. A legacy of choosing courage, choosing gratitude, choosing moments to cherish. These virtues that we choose to embody have a rippling effect, inspiring all those that know us. And through them, together, we can inspire countless lives. Thank you.